We're going to take a look at uh, using some uh, UHF connectors. I've got two adapters on here, BNC to uh, UHF. And you notice I can't pull this back like I would on a normal piece of, uh, or a normal PL259 plug. I've got one of those uh, right here that we can look at. And as you see, uh, what I can do with that is to pull this back and expose uh, these uh, little tits that are uh, supposed to fit into the serrated edges here. So uh, I can uh, easily uh, get them lined up. And uh, the reason I point this out is that this type of a uh, adapter has only four detents and this is easily, uh, you can easily ro rotate it to find it here and then screw this on. But uh, when you use adapters like this, you can't pull this back and so you have to uh, sort of put it on, hold this, get it down to where it just touches and then make sure you find the detent and then screw it the rest of the way on. And uh, that's uh, easier to do with this, obviously. So on this uh, end, I, I do that and I, I'm fine. Because once I get down there, all I have to do is rock it a little bit and, and uh, it'll, it'll go on easily. Um, but you do have to be, be careful when you have an adapter of this uh, that has uh, that kind of a, a situation. So anyway, let's put this thing together and see what we've got. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, closer to the screen here so you can see things more clearly. And uh, see if this does the job for us. I think that might do it. Gets just about everything. Alright, uh, I previously set this thing up. Uh, what I've got uh, set up at the moment is... Uh, I've got uh, 10 megahertz, 50 megahertz, 149 megahertz, and 224 megahertz as the frequencies of interest in the, for this uh, antenna switch that I'm going to be looking at in a minute. And uh, so each of the markers has been adjusted accordingly. So uh, there you can see the uh, the losses right now, which this has drifted a little bit, so let's uh, let's do this. We'll go back to tracking generator. We'll go back to normalize. We'll turn this off. And there's our minus 10 dB, which is this six and the four plus any losses in here. Uh, we'll punch the normalize, and it puts it at the zero line up here. And now we got zero zero zero. So we're in pretty good shape in that regard. Uh, so we're we're better calibrated than we were. And uh, so what we want to do now is to to substitute for this. We're going to substitute for this guy. We're going to substitute uh, a uh, an old antenna switch that I happen to have. It's really for HF, but we'll see how how good it is at the higher frequencies as well. This is a little puppy, and uh, number two is the receive side, or antenna side, shall we say, which is represented by the, uh, the port over on the input to the spectrum analyzer. Get that on there, and then the common is right here. So we'll put this on the common. Same thing applies here, by the way, on rocking these guys a little bit to try to get them in the detents. You can screw it all the way down. So we get it down to where it uh, just touches. And then we uh, sort of rock it and make sure we get it into the detents. Alright, so I should be going from here to here. But actually this switch is switched to number three here. And what you're seeing now is the actual isolation between the uh, ports. But let's go to two. 
All right, now we're seeing the actual uh, loss through from the active port to the common port. And we're seeing point uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 03, and 02. So we have very low loss coming through this thing until we get up here. And then we have a little bit of a problem. So let's hit, uh, I'm going to put uh, punch up peak. Let's uh, get over here so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to punch up peak. Then I'm going to go to uh, uh, minimum search. And it'll find the minimum peak, which is at uh, 9.84 dB down and 3.2583 megahertz and uh, I'll come back over here so you can see that a little better <laughs> okay uh, so anyway so that's what we've got is uh, 3.25833 uh, we got uh, minus 9.8 at this anti-resonance I guess you'd call that it's a suck out so anything above there I, I think that you don't want to try to use this thing but at our specified frequencies down here. We have ha still have a, oh, let's see, point, uh, oh, that's the three. Okay, so it's it's uh, moved this to uh, the, the, the notch here. So let's uh, go back to uh, uh, 10 megahertz with that one. Okay, so now we have uh, Again, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.01, 0 0.04. So very low loss between this. Now we'll get back to the other situation. If I switch this to there, what do we have? Well, on three or four, or on the common, as you see, there's slight differences here, but pretty much the isolation is the same. And uh, so. Uh, We'll leave it on 3 here. And what we have is uh, 60 dB at 10 megahertz, 42 at 50 megahertz. So those two are fine. If you had uh, 100 watts, that would give you 10 milliwatts into the analyzer, for example, if that happened to be on the other port. Um, and uh, the... Uh, 149 megahertz is about 25 dB, which is uh, okay. It's not great, uh, but uh, might be adequate depending on what you're doing with the switch. But I think you're pushing your luck when you're up here at 224 megahertz. I think you'd want more than 16 dB of uh, isolation. So that gives you a pretty good idea what this switch can do. I'd say it's fine for uh, this switch is probably fine for HF. It's fine for VHF uh, at 2 meters, maybe, uh, but certainly is uh, probably okay at 50 megahertz. So that's as high as I'd probably want to use this thing. This is an old, uh, what is this, a Heath kit? Yeah, it's a Heath kit uh, HD-1234. I suspect that's a fairly early model. <laughs> and I'm pretty certain that the spec was only for HF. I thought I'd also uh, do a little teardown of this unit to show you uh, some of the construction to show you why we have some of the resonance issues and so forth. This is just a ceramic wafer uh, switch that's been, it's two-sided. It has this, which goes through this uh, ground terminal, which is shorted out whenever uh, a particular uh, um, position is not being used. And as you see, this gap allows this one to receive energy from there. Um, and, uh, or actually from, from here, this is the uh, uh, common port. You see it doesn't have a, a place on this side. On the other side of this wafer, of course, it goes straight through from that one to the one that's missing here. So the other side of this switch on this particular position um, connects directly from there to there.
but of course there's inductances in here uh, there's uh, lengths of uh, contacts here there's also the length of the connector itself all of which contributes to the performance at higher uh, frequencies especially UHF so that's probably uh, as good an explanation as there can be for why we have that suck out at 325 and uh, this is technology from the 1960s maybe even the 50s I don't re really remember when uh, Heathkit made these things so modern ones are a little better than this and uh, I'd love to have one, but I don't happen to have one, so you'll have to make do with how I tested this one. If you got one of the more modern ones that uh, maybe is uh, better constructed than this for UHF, um, uh, you can uh, do this evaluation yourself and see what you come up with on the performance of that particular unit. You can also, of course, use the... Uh, um, the uh, return loss a return loss bridge or the uh, ZFDC uh, um, directional coupler to determine what the standing wave is at the various bands with this thing just to uh, see how it performs that way. I'm not going to do that in this case but uh, we know it has a pretty good uh, match and pretty good isolation in HF which is what it was designed for and uh, probably has a uh, reasonable uh, performance at 50 megahertz as well so if I use this at all I'll be using it on those bands